This question always comes along in my YouTube comments and uh, well, it's not that often, but I do believe that many people are actually asking this question on Google. And uh, since it's Sunday, I decided to take this time to make an educational video in regards to what is the best computer or laptop for a day trader in Forex. Hi everyone, this is Christian here on YouTube and welcome to a brand new video for the channel. If you're new to my channel and this YouTube channel, I do a lot of software reviews, broker reviews, and give you tips and strategies as to how to make money. But I also try to go over topic and talk about different needs that you as a day trader actually have. And in this specific video, I'm going to be talking about the computer that you need in order to be a day trader. Now in this specific video, I'm going to talk about what is the basic computer, what is the one that I would recommend you to have, and what is the one that I use. Either of them are a good option but we're going to talk about the pros and the cons and of course I'm going to give you some tips as to how you can get the better performance out of your computer. So with that being said, if you find any part of this video valuable, make sure you smash the like button and let's dive into the video. All right, so the first thing that I actually started to do in this specific video or before making this video was to do a research in regards to the three different platforms that I have uh, used and that I find a lot more valuable for Forex traders. And that is MT4, MT5, and C Trader. Now, I'm not gonna go deeply specifically talk about each specific platform, but you can look it up on Google in order to understand what these platforms are all about. But if you already have some sort of knowledge in regards to these trading platforms. Right now, we're gonna talk about the requirements of these platforms, okay? Let's go ahead and start with uh, MetaTrader 4. MetaTrader 4 is the most basic one, so we're gonna talk about the requirements. And I found a website over here, I'm not gonna say the name of it, but I found a website where a lot of people were actually driving with uh, questions and answers and opinions, and I found the, the ones that are the most common denominator in regards to the requirements of MT4, and that is, uh, a Windows 2000 or later with a 2.5 gigahertz uh, or faster CPU, 512 megabytes, megabytes of RAM, and uh, let me see which one, and a 2080p, no, it's a, a 1024 by 764 or higher screen resolution and a connection of 56, I'm sorry, kilobytes per second or faster. Obviously, with these requirements, these are the most basic requirements that I mean, I don't even think those computers exist anymore, but if they do, I'm, I'm sure that the, the software is going to run is super, super slow when it comes to it. And uh, this is important because at the end of the day, for instance, when I deliver the VLWFX tool or the VLW Auto Trader, you're gonna need some sort of fast response from the actual meta traders in order for you to execute the trades. So this is important, right? Now we're gonna jump into the requirements of MetaTrader 5. The minimum system requirements are the operating system must be a Windows 98 uh, Service Pack 2 or higher. The processor needs to be at least an Intel Cel Celeron base processor, at least 1.7 gigahertz or higher, a uh, RAM of 256 megabytes of RAM, and at least 50 megabytes of free drive storage. We're talking about very, very old computers right now. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm gonna tell you what I think are the minimum that you should be getting to and then we can start from there. This is for MetaTrader 5. And now we're gonna talk about C Trader, which I believe is the, the, the uh, what is it called? The heaviest software that you can use for Forex trading. And uh, the minimum requirements is a dual core CPU with one gigahertz, uh, two gigabytes of RAM, at least four would be better. Uh, Windows XP or Vista or seven or anything above. Uh, you need an internet connection of 10, kilobytes per second, I would say that's too low. 
and a hard drive space of 100 megabytes as a minimum. So as you can see, in order to use these stuff or these um, systems, you don't really need that like supercomputer or anything like that, okay? Obviously it depends on uh, what is it that you want to uh, achieve if you're gonna be doing multitasking and so on, but that's when I'm going to jump right now and give you my recommendation. So first of all, let me give you my first basic, like the basic recommendation that I, I want you to have if you wanna be, uh, if you're going to be trading with MT4, MT5 or Ctrader. This works for all of you, all of the, all of the systems and more importantly remind you that they always like some most of the brokers have a web-based platform which means that you can actually use the website itself instead of actually installing a software this is only if you don't have the minimum requirements that you see in this computer but trust me it's way more worth it to actually invest 100 200 dollars in a desktop which are cheaper than a laptop and get a way better performance okay a very basic computer could be a dual core or i don't know an, an i3 or or something like that but we're gonna talk about it right now first thing that i want to recommend you when it comes to what type of computer the basic one i would recommend you to stick to at least an i3 or an equivalent on amd processor okay sorry that i'm going to talk about like two like i'm not even that technical but if in case you don't understand me try to follow me along i'm going to try to put the links below in the description so that you understand or not the links but the names of the stuff in the description so that you actually can look it up on google but yeah an i3 or an equivalent on a Ryzen or AMD processor would be amazing, okay? It needs to be at least a dual core or if you can have four cores would be amazing, but that's gonna be the intermediate trading system or requirements that I'm gonna share. So that's basic, all right? The processor in i3 or equivalent. Then I would recommend you to have at least four gigabyte, gigabytes of RAM, okay? That's super important. Uh, the bus, it won't really matter as long as you don't install anything heavy on your computer, but four gigabytes of RAM would be amazing. If you only can have two gigabytes, which I don't really think they produce those uh, RAMs anymore because the DDR4 don't come in two gigabytes, then do it with two gigabytes, but I think four would be enough and would be super, super cool. There are some motherboards out there that can, you can get for like 20 bucks or $15 even, and they can support four gigabytes of RAM and an i3 or an equivalent on AMD processor as well. So that's uh, the second thing. The third thing is at least have an, an HDD or hard drive device of at least 128 gigabytes, all right? No less than that. They don't really sell less than that. And if you can actually upgrade it to an SSD, which is a solid state drive, then it will be super better because at the end of the day, a SSD, just for you guys who don't know, it gives a lot more fast in or a lot more speed on the computer. All right, that's basically the point of it. Then I believe the rest of the computer is like, you, for instance, you don't need a graphics card. You don't need anything extra at all. The screen, all of the screens at, at, at this time, now that we're talking about LED screens and LCD screens and so on, then the quality is actually better. The quality or the screen resolution that the, the requirement said, it was for those big CRT screens or CRT monitors that we used to have back in the 90s. But nowadays, you can work with any specific screen, okay? So that's the basic, basic requirement for the first computer. If you want an intermediate computer out there like some sort of a better deal with it, then I would suggest you to go with at least an i5 or equivalent, which would be around the Ryzen 5 on a uh, uh, computer, okay? Ryzen 5 is a very, very fast processor. And if you ask me, I do prefer Ryzen uh, on top of Intel. It's just because it's faster, it's better for gaming, and it overall gives me a better, better performance. So an i i5 or a Ryzen 5, would be good for an immediate computer. Then I would suggest you to go with at least eight to 16 gigs of RAM eight to 16 gigs would be amazing. And by the way, hot tip in here, if you're going to buy 16 gigs of RAM, then I suggest you to buy two of eight, which gives a better flow on the memory and the bus speed. So the computer will actually get better performance from the two memory RAMs instead of just one of 16, okay? So six, uh, eight to 16. And more importantly for the hard drive, I would suggest you to have at least 500 gigabytes of hard drive. I, I 
again, you can upgrade to an SSD if that's the option that you have available and it will improve your speed a lot. With this computer, you have everything you need in order to trade with MT4, MT5, or C Trader. But just for you guys who are curious about what computer I use and what would I recommend, and this is good for both laptops and computers. So I'm gonna tell you what, what I, what I think is the highest, well, not the highest, right? But what would be like insanely good for your trading career? I'm gonna stop with my laptop because my laptop is actually with lower, you know, features in regards to my desktop. So this laptop right here is a Dell G7 1500 something. I don't even remember the name, but this is a gaming computer. And this one comes along with an i7 core processor. That's the only thing I don't like. Then it comes with a GTX 1050 Ti video card because it's a gaming computer. It comes with a 16 gigs of RAM um, DDR4. And I do believe it comes with one terabyte of hard drive, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure about the, the hard drive, but of course I have an external hard drive, hard drive right here. You can barely see it. It's an SSD external for two terabytes. So overall, a great computer. It never gets stuck, it never gets frozen or anything like that. Of course, right now I'm gonna give you four tips so that your computer doesn't crash and that you can have a smooth trading session with your computer, with whichever computer you have, okay? And now talking about the desktop that I have, the one that I have right here, I basically use in a Ryzen 7 3700K, that's the processor. Then I work with 64 gigs of RAM, 4,000 buzz if I'm not mistaken, then I have have a GTX 2080 Ti video card for gaming and I do have four terabytes of hard uh, drive with SSD. Now this is distributed between two internal and two external, uh, one external hard drive that I have. And I think I don't, I'm not missing anything in regards to this computer. That's basically the most important thing. I handle it with two 4K monitors, but it's really up to me. If you can have multiple screens will be amazing, but if you can, that's fine. Or you can even have one laptop connected to one external monitor and handle the two screens. It's really up to you. I actually use it for versatility because at the end, I'm actually looking at the charts and trading view. Then I'm looking at my broker and so on. So I do a lot of things. I do a lot of multitasking. So I'm always actually looking at it. and sometimes I'm even playing my video games in my computer Which I only play Call of Duty honestly and I do have my trading view on top Like in order to see what's the movement of the market in case I'm actually monitoring the trade or something like that So the, the dual monitor actually works really good I even had four before but I really found it unnecessary for my purposes But that's exactly what I'm using so with this computer I haven't had any problems and I don't think I'm going to with in the next few years. Now it's time for me to give you a few tips in regards to how to keep your computer in good shape and make sure that you actually like, look, if you don't have the possibilities right now to purchase a super high speed computer or super powerful computer, that's fine. You can start with the basics, but if you're gonna start with the basics, I recommend you to do these four things before you actually start trading right now. Number one is that you need to format your PC or your laptop and reinstall the Windows, okay? That's super important. Some of you might have the Windows already installed in your computer and you don't have the actual CD or you don't have the actual uh, code. So if you can actually buy Windows, that's fine. If not, you may you may not be able to actually do this step, but it's really up to you. But I would do that if I had the chance to actually do it because it will actually delete all of the unnecessary files, cache and all those things in my actual computer so that it can run smooth. Okay, that's tip number one. Tip number three, uh, three is install only the needed software. I've seen a lot of people installing Skype, installing, uh, uh, I don't know, all the Office, Windows Office things such as InfoPad, Grove or something like that. I don't even know what all of them are. I only install Excel, uh, Outlook and Word and that's pretty much it and PowerPoint. Then I don't install Publisher or Picture View or anything like that. So if, even if you don't use Excel or if you have two computers and you want to use just one for trading, then don't install anything that you don't need. Okay. Don't install, I don't know, some sort of 
music stuff, Deezer or anything like that. Just use it for your computer so that it runs smooth. It doesn't crash at the moment that you actually are about to place a trade or something like that, right? Number three tip is have an external hard drive, okay? If you can, have an SSD, which are about $100, $150, but are totally worth it. But if not, buy a $25 hard drive on Amazon or whatever you can and have it always in there. Why? So that you can keep all your files in the hard drive in case anything happens to the computer you're always going to have a backup that's number one reason and number two reason is that so that it doesn't use the memory cache on your computer so that it can run faster okay and the tip number four is always have an antivirus and i want to say up front right here i know there's a lot of ways to actually get free softwares, free windows and free stuff online to crack it or whatever. But an antivirus without the original license, it's another virus, okay? That pretends that it finds viruses, but it's another virus, okay? So at least on this one, invest on the original copy, which is like $30 or something like that for lifetime or for year. Me personally, I, I, I use one that is like $59 and another one that's $79 for a different computer but it's because I use it for different things. It's an enterprise version. But if you're just going to use it in that computer, make sure that you actually spend the $30 to $40 in that antivirus so that you can actually have your computer protected. Not that you're going to be navigating online and doing a bunch of things, but just to avoid Trojans and, and worms and so on that are going to make your computer slower. It's not like they're going to steal your information, but your computer is going to run small, uh, slower. So that's actually something that you should do. So I hope this video really helps you guys out to clear up the question as to what would be a good computer for uh, MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, and C Trader. But more importantly, I want to point this out. I'm not a Mac user, okay? I'm not a Mac user, but if you have a Mac that, that is at least 2015 up until today, all of them were run amazingly good with all these softwares. Now, I'm not gonna talk about compatibility because I don't own a Mac computer, but I do know that they are way stronger than current PCs for Windows. So definitely should be good, but I'm gonna try to look for more information in case you guys want me to talk about my computers, put it in the comment section below. I'm gonna do my research and then post another video talking about Mac computers. And just to close with this video, Windows version, because I know I'm gonna come up with this question, Windows version don't even make any difference whatsoever, but I do think that Windows 10 is a lot softer than all the previous Windows versions. So Windows 7 was good, Windows Vista sucked, so if you have done changed it, then with Windows 7 was good, but it was a little bit heavier than Windows 10, then Windows 8 was not good at all, so either upgrade or downgrade to Windows 7, and then all of them, oh, all, I mean, all of the Windows version are super, super good. Try to put a light version. If you are not going to use it for companies or anything like super big, try to install the home or pro version, but the, the smallest one so that it takes a less memory of your computer and it gets the job done. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you found value on it, make sure you smash the like button. And more importantly, if by any chance you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer those comments as soon as I can. And thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. And I'll see you on the next one.